All right, looks like things are starting to go a little bit in the direction that I was hoping for. And honestly, I think that this like this one sentence fixed a lot of people's complaints, and I'm gonna tell them exactly why. So one thing I'm just gonna get to immediately in the chapter is all you have to do to bring this up to anybody that complains about the God Seeds and the fact that they were like pretty much, for the most part, each of them were beaten in one chapter. Here's the thing, all you gotta bring up the fact is you don't really beat the God Seeds without beating Alderaan. So each of the God Seeds individually not being as like, not being super strong to take down or not being super hard to take down. They all have extremely dangerous abilities, but it's not gonna matter because Alderaan straight says that they'll just grow back. So they're just gonna kind of come back after a certain amount of time. And like, yeah, you don't even really have to worry about that at that point because it's like, it's like blowing off a character's legs who can regenerate cool not really they're just gonna grow back and then you're good you did damage but you didn't really defeat them all you kind of did was buy you time which i think is really really cool because that just means that it's like if you were in this situation it's like oh yeah you beat the you beat the guy but yeah the, if you don't finish the whole thing within a certain amount of time he's just gonna come back so you didn't really beat him all you did all you did was just kind of like prolong your death i think that's badass though i like that a lot but um at this point, like, Aldron's upset. He's like, even Gears lost. And he's like, astonished, like, you know, uh, have humans grown more powerful over, like, the, these centuries? Which is actually true. Which is actually a true statement. That's a, well, a true question that has, a, uh, like, a definitive answer. And that is yes, because that's why, um, that's why with part of the Dragon Slayer plan, they sent people, they sent the Dragon Slayers in the future to a point in time where magic was more rich in the air and people were generally more powerful. Um, but, Natsu is like asking him a question if he's like a dragon who hates humans and I figured he was gonna say yeah but he's like he's kind of looking at them more as this like oh I have no you know like I have no feelings whatsoever towards uh nutrients and so essentially Alderaan thinks of it as like you know it, it's like eating to him but it's not the same kind of like way that like the other people looking at him or look at him. It's not like, oh, you're looking at him as, like, if it were, if you had, like, a human farm as a dragon or something. Essentially, that's pretty much what towns were to, uh, dragons. But, um, you look at it more like a, um, a flock, like an animal. Like, you have a bunch of, like, okay, yeah, we have a bunch of chickens. It's like, you have your own, like, little coop of animals, um, for food. Whereas Alderaan is looking at it more from, like, this weird dead face, like, oh, yeah, it's just nourishment. Like, he... He doesn't look like anything beyond that. It just looks at them more like things, which is really odd. And, but I, I like this about him. I think he's really interesting even more so after this chapter. But um, he's talking about how he has no real need for like Natsu being here either. And he's like, well, I've had these towns built on my body to absorb the nutrients. And then um, he's been doing it for generations, just centuries, three centuries of just absorbing power. And um, after that point, he's like, well, you know, it's, Nazis are asking, like, well, if you keep fighting, you're, to, you're gonna end up destroying those people. And Alderaan's just like, I don't need him anymore. Now I have enough power to consume the other dragon gods. Which, that, uh, that does build up my theory that prior to Acnologia, Alderaan was, like, a big deal dragon. So we don't know, like, where, like, pre-Acnologia, we don't really know anything about dragon rankings outside of Igneal. Because we knew Igneal was a, you know, the fire dragon king, um, at the time. But... Alderaan, like, I'm wondering if he was maybe, like, the wood dragon king before he became a dragon god. Because I, I still believe that he had, like, a really big, um, ego to him, even amongst dragons. And I think that's why a hundred years after Acnologia started his onslaught, that Alderaan went to go try and fight him and failed and barely survived and then had the towns built on him. But after that point, I also really, really enjoyed the, this whole, like, exchange when they're getting ready to fight because Alderaan, um... Alderaan tells him, he's like, you know, I'm going to start with you getting you out of here. And he calls him the brother of Ignea. So he knows about Ignea as well, which is very intriguing. He, that means he also knows about, probably, he should know about Ignea. And it's the fact that he acknowledges the fact that they're tied together. He knows about him. But I'm wondering if that's all the fact that he can, you know, has this whole mind reading power and healing hearts. So he probably found out from Natsu that way, because I'm just wondering how else would he really know anything about, like, Ignea, considering he's been, like, been resting for 300 years, and he wouldn't know that whole reveal unless, like, he knew about Natsu beforehand. So I feel like it's just because he absorbed the memories um, of Natsu at some point, you know, with Wolfen. But also, obviously, that's Alderaan's power in general. Um, but 
Natsu saying that's like it's true that they have the same dad. His only brother is Zarif. I really like that a lot. That was fantastic. That is a really good line because Natsu acknowledging Zarif as his brother is really good. I've I've been a huge fan anytime we've had any Zarif references with Natsu because it it shows Natsu's growth and like development around this whole idea. From like when he first when it first happened, he didn't care about Zarif at all. He didn't like he. He didn't care that it was his brother. He saw him as, as a, you know, a threat to the guild and then ended up being kind of nicer about it after he beat Zarif. And now you can see a year later, he's really reflected on it. I like that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that whole part, uh, portion of the story because I was a big fan of Zarif. Zarif is, in my opinion, Zarif is uh, Iromachima's best Britain character that he's ever done. And I'm a huge fan of Zarif. He's one of my favorite antagonists like in fiction he's definitely one of my favorites uh, like all together you got you get all the like the big guys and you know where you rope in your personal favorites so i put Zeref way up there but um so obviously him dying and being gone it's like oh man i'm never really gonna see that character again um unless some absurd shenanigans happen but seeing him referenced in like growth portions um of the main character i think is fantastic i really enjoyed that but they're attacking. Natsu saying he could see the attack now. So I'm wondering what exactly that's going to really mean. If like if he can see it now, does and it's not as powerful, does that mean like he's not really casting an attack? Because the way that Alderaan kind of like does like a thrust near him, maybe it's just force. Maybe it's just like a force attack. Like he's literally just putting like a concussive like pressure like right there and using that physical strength. Kind of like uh, Yami recently did with his death thrust. It's just that enhanced physical strength put into like sheer lunging force. That was badass. But Alderaan is acknowledging like, you know, it's with the God Seeds, uh, you know, destroyed. That his power has been weakened. But it's still powerful enough to take down Natsu. And after that point, that's when he reveals like, eventually they're going to revive. They're going to be regrown and be right back up. So, yeah, they're... They're just gonna like Alderaan's gonna be perfectly fine if they don't beat him in this amount of time, which I think they're still gonna have to run. I think they're gonna have to run away. I don't think they're beating Alderaan because they can defeat the God Seed Alderaan, but I don't really see that possible now because of the time limit. Both on Gajo would have to take down um, Alderaan because like we find out that at Frenish's max size that it can only hold for three minutes. So. You have three minutes of the timer that you'd have to somehow take down Alderaan, which I don't think is going to happen. And you would have to do it also, like, to worry about the God Seed spawning. So this is a big timed match. And one of the things that I think is also really important, that when it comes down to this statement where it's like, they'll just grow back, it's either going to be a race against the clock, which I, I don't think it really can be, because I don't think Alderaan should go down this easily. Especially when we know now that he seems to believe that he's stronger than the other Dragon Gods. And he has a valuable reason to kind of like put him around that considering he's been absorbing all this extra power but i i don't know if he's going to be the strongest i can see why he thinks that way i think that he's getting ready to go back and be a conqueror but um um i i worried that oh i i, I messed up my train of thought um with alderaan kind of like doing that i think that he's in a very dangerous position with the other dragon gods so um I, I i don't really think that he should be beaten here because it would i think it'd be kind of be a waste but i think that it, otherwise when the other god seeds like start to grow back they're gonna have to run i think they're gonna have to flee i found my train of thought again i completely lost it for a moment but now we're back on it uh because if the god seeds just grow back then i don't I, like i don't know how long they're gonna be able to keep repeating the process of defeating the god seeds because like wendy's out of pretty much out of magic Jalal took some pretty good damage. Um, Juvia and, and Gray, like, I mean, they could probably do a couple more unison raids, but I, I don't really think that they're going to be defeating um, defeating the God Seeds again. But, um, yeah, I, I think they're going to have to run, and then Alderaan will be used for more stuff afterwards. Meanwhile, like, uh, you know, he uses, like, this really cool attack, like this Leaf Tempest. He has this Whirlwind of Leaves. Probably, like, just... So, I, I wonder if, if, similar to, like, how he made that pressurized kind of, like, thrust... Maybe he's doing this so he's kind of like carrying the wind or the leaves with so much force that they're one able to kind of like deal over Natsu's attack and as well as like they're going to be like doing crazy like damage of just that this rapidly pressurized leaf smashing into you. It's probably going to slice the hell out of you. 
but um alderance is sort of about like there are leaves that in the world that don't burn and i'm very curious about that statement as well because maybe he's gonna be able to use different like imagine if when he says like oh different trees around the world maybe he has the ability to uh, like absorb different kinds of trees and then use aspects about them like imagine like with nazi's fire like if there was a type of tree where literally something within the tree it didn't burn like it's there leaves from some land where that's always on fire or something and the trees have grown like somehow magically immune but like, imagine also kind of like um what was it kamika the member of the hunger wolf knights who had the paper kind of like that but with leaves instead of like colored papers each of them having a different effect like maybe he could have like leaves that poison or maybe he could have leaves that are like absurdly durable like they're harder than steel or something which would maybe we could get shown more with the the whole like kaiju gajil thing going on but we get just as fairy tale always has when it's uh, like fights when it's like casters and stuff it's like okay the fight is how to get around these characters how do we get around this guy with some crazy power and now when you get to like get back to a fight with dragon slayers or in this case obviously a humanoid dragon just laying them in also that was one of the things i wanted to say as well as i don't think that he'll lose here because him living is obviously what's important because if he's if they leave and run away and it's just alderaan he'll just have the god seeds back so the next time anyone tries to fight them then he can go at him again and we could see more from the god seeds in time like more techniques maybe we could see other characters handling those scenarios and and look at the god seeds more like challenges rather than individual characters because they are just powers that come out of um of alderaan which is really interesting when you think about it because you have to defeat all of them in order to get to the main body really because they're obviously not they're not like uh like a straight wall gauntlet but they would just come to wherever you are so you have to defeat them within and then a time limit after that defeat alderaan's god seed in order to probably even do anything beyond that with the main body of alderaan I, I really like that aspect about it because Alderaan has been treated more like this big raid boss than anything. But and he's uh, like him and Natsu are fighting. He's talking about the leaves that can't really be burnt. Natsu is just getting like smashed, like getting the, this, a straight uppercut right in the ribs. And that's what I mean. Like fights with dragons and dragon slayers are always brutal. They're not made for like, oh, how am I going to fight around this character's special power? Because there are different ones where it's like a mystery. It's like a problem solving boss fight. And then there's just melee fist flying getting brutal and natsu and um and alderaan just going at it which was really fun to watch and alderaan just saying like one of the things that like oh you know your attacks can't hit me natsu just manages to get one but it's like yes they can i got this and it's shown outside of him that's when we get this badass gajil like titan gajil throwing fists like uppercutting alderaan keep in mind i've looked into the height of alderaan Alderaan, like, the way he's, like, leans upwards when he's on all fours, or at least just kind of, like, sitting down and, and getting comfortable, like, he's, like, 70, he's, like, 70, uh, kilometers off the ground, like, his head, and then from head to tail, he's 200 kilometers, uh, long, I think that's what, like, a hundred and, like, 170 miles or something, 160 miles, he's huge, actually, I might be less than, they might be 150, I don't remember off the top of my head, I, 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 no, kilo I could calculate kilometers, but I don't remember the exact conversion between miles and, and kilometers. But anyway, uh, Godjil just throwing fists at him. Yeah, like I said, though, he's he was my like, Godjil is probably like 60 kilometers tall right now. He's gigantic, 60 to 70, just being huge. And uh, after that point, badass fucking uh, spread of him just a straight uppercut right into Aldron. That looks badass. It's not really doing damage, but it is hitting him. And you got to keep that in mind because just because it. it it's gonna show impact doesn't mean it's gonna actually show damage look at like when urza you know dropped all those swords into all um Acnologia's back or when he got hit by christina the force hit him but all it kind of did was pretty much bump him and then like that's about it so one thing revealed in it when like you guys got like characters like their reactions to like what's going on there was like uh brandish saying how they have a three minute time limit but i did really like the part where kana um yelled at brandish and brandish kind of got scared for a moment and uh I, and it's like revealed that it's because she thought about aquarius for a moment and it went from like scared to sad and then a little bit messed like a little bit worried I, I like that character aspect for Brandish. I like that apparently it's this extremely powerful character, extremely powerful, 
has this weakness to getting yelled at by uh, you know anybody that might remind her of Aquarius. I think that's a, a pretty fun character trait. But um, while they're fighting, there's kind of going at it, Acnologia style, with well, Acnologia style, all their own style of just straight mon giant monster kaiju brawl. Um, the thing to think about, I, I think that was, I believe, hinted, but not really full on revealed. When it comes to Alderaan, um, he's got like the God Seed version. I've said that's pretty much his avatar, but I've wondered if it was like he's seeing through both of them at once, um, or how exactly that works. But I, I, I'm pretty sure he can switch between the two. He switches between his main body and his avatar, and and like anytime that Alderaan, like the God Seed, is active, that the full dragon one is probably just stationary, like it's just still. And I think that makes sense given the fact that this seems like this God Seed version seems to be his personality. And otherwise, like, why wouldn't the other God Seeds just be him in different shapes too? But they have their own kind of thing going on. So I think he's just got the one version of himself, but it, he's able to kind of swap around. But anyway, uh, Godjil throwing hits. That looks badass. I think this is really cool. I like that you're having a fight on the outside of Alderaan and on the inside of Alderaan. And like, um, um, Godjil getting like uh, attacked by all of these big wooden like spikes, all these big roots. But he goes and just covers himself in metal, like his iron like skin, just completely heavy metal right on. And they break on him. And so that's fine because right now it's literally just a size thing. Godjil has more mass. His steel is way thicker. Um, he's going to have like way more physical heavy strikes. He's more powerful, but Alderaan... You can tell like Alderaan is is putting more in it because when he got hit by those little spikes, he still bled a little bit. You can see a little bit of blood coming out of his mouth, but it was probably just like a bit of a heavy hit and then he turned into the iron. So instead of it doing like piercing damage, it just was like a concussive attack, like just front force. But then he hits Alderaan and Alderaan not being worried by it at all. Like Alderaan doesn't seem like he's in that, oh no, what do I do kind of spot. He's just like, all right. Okay, yeah, you guys come over to my, my place, you mess with my cities, you destroy my god seeds, and now you're bothering me, like, uh, on on being, he's getting annoyed, essentially, because if you think about it from his perspective, he now has to fight two fights, and it's not the fact that these guys are, like, two people that are at his level, he has to, like, switch between the, full, like, his real body and the, uh, the god seed avatar multiple times just to go, ba uh, just to combat these guys, so it's probably just, Oh, like mildly irritating the fact that he's got these things stacked like back to back and just kind of laying on him but um as it were now he's oh man i this was the hype thing from this chapter like the other stuff was really interesting the stuff with natsu talking about Zeref and um and all the run talking about igneal like the whole three minute time uh, time span like this was the thing that got me most hype for the next chapter 100 percent is when he's like i see now you like you humans you know you wish to anger a god and then he when he when he says like I'm gonna show you the and then the beautiful beautiful gift of when teased big attacks show up not just gonna be big melee attacks when you have some named move I can't wait it sounds cool I like the the, the whole thing that you're going with thicket I think that sounds badass I'm hoping to see like it's Alderaan makes like a giant forest like a giant like dome where it's big to him. And then you realize how much mass he's just covered with like horrifying like wicked trees and thorns and maybe it does some big aoe effect and just becomes super dangerous I, I don't know i want something really crazy like that and not so i just don't want it to be boring and basic but i don't think it will be i think this is going to be badass but anyway um yeah i'm i think this chapter this is a chapter didn't have like a ton to kind of like branch out and talk about there like there were some nice character noting things but I don't think there was as many things like set up. There wasn't as going to be like as outside of the time limit. I think the time limit is a really nice uh, uh, addition that we have. Because not only would they have the time limit, Godjil even being giant and being able to help Noxu in the fight with uh, Alderaan, you also have the fact that um, you know uh, that it's so long the God Seeds are going to get revived. Though I am curious with Brandish there, like it, how Brandish, like how much of an extra effort Brandish should be able to do, because Brandish should be able to definitely provide like a level of use in fighting the the god seeds like it's just not because she's not weak at all we everybody knows this brandish is a big deal even with like even with characters way above her she's still like one of the top people on the whole planet she's still on the handful like in the world within fairy tale 
Um, so that was really good. I really enjoyed that. I really can't wait to see what happens next. Two weeks, I know, but keep in mind also two weeks. That week we're gonna get the game coming out, which is gonna be a badass week for fairy tale fans. We're gonna get the game. We're gonna get a new chapter two weeks from now, and then like two days later, the game. I'm hyped. I can't wait for that. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. We're, we're gonna be getting around some big stuff. And I can't wait to see this thing, because you know it's gonna be some badass, really crazy move. Cause if it's a if it's a named attack by somebody this big, it's gonna be impressive. Look at uh Akinologia. Eternal Flare. Like imagine like we're gonna get some big ass tree version of that, something like that, like to that scale. And it should be to a bigger scale because Alderaan is is way bigger, so I feel like his you're able to use way larger of a visual scale of the world when you can compare it to something way closer. Like, you can have something where Alderaan looks like, you know, you're... It, like, if imagine you in, like, a, on top of a of a 10-story building, the way that you look down at... Like maybe you could see somebody just barely. Imagine that, like, but it's Alderaan, and then realize how much, like, landscape you have to be, like, showing if Alderaan looks tiny on there. You'd be, like, in thousands and thousands of miles... Uh, probably way more than that probably like tens of thousands of miles or something ridiculous and you could probably do like this massive like terrifying like forest to do it because I, I am hoping it's like a scary force like a halloween style just going off of like because the fact that alderaan has kind of a little bit of a spooky vibe to his design at least by his uh both his designs really because of the horns he's got he has like almost this kind of like wiccan look to it and then it's similar to that of the god seed as well but the horns and the we almost like jack-o-lantern like face I think it would fit into his character. I think that'd be really cool. So, it's got to wait two weeks, and then we're getting a thick week, especially that week. That's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see how this goes. I'm, I, I'm really also hoping before this fight's over, I want to see a roar from Alderaan. I want to see the full dragon form, like, roar, and I want to see, like, how does it work? Because, like, with all the other dragons, like, there's a level of understanding how exactly they're going to... Well, the only other one I can think of recently that would confuse me is uh mad bulls because curious it's like razor wind with if you had wraith it'd be like spiritual energy like ectoplasm or something um as we saw with nibiru he would use or i guess race in the officials but if he was nibiru it you know it's a big thing of his sticky uh you know corrosive or not corrosive sticky adhesive silk i don't know why it's adhesive it's already sticky but like what would what would Mad Mulls be and what would Alderaan's be? I, I just can see it as almost like pressurized wind with like spore, like not spores, like micro like tree seeds and they completely destroy an area and then shortly after that it grows. So you have this like pressure, like heavy raw force attack that has afterwards all this weight and like power growing over you. I think that'd be really cool. Maybe they could absorb everything from the land as well while they're doing it. There's definitely stuff that you can play with that I think that would make it really interesting and I I can't wait to see how that goes That's one of the bigger things that I'm waiting for when it comes to um, uh, To Alderaan right now. I, I, I want to see that roar man as well as I can't wait to see what this thicket of arms is This thing sounds badass. I, I I'm super hyped to see what this is I I've noticed how here Mishima he whenever he has a tree like in plant mode, they've been pretty good Look at someone like Mark Gear. Look at someone like Azuma. Badass. Like, and whenever he goes to tree, like, oh, and Hardener. Hardener to a degree over it in Rave Master. That too, yeah. That whenever Hiroshima does like a tree guy. Oh, no, Daichi and, uh, and Eden Zero. He's like his odd, the odd one out. But anyway, uh, other than that, oh, Mark Gear especially. Love Mark Gear. But anyway, other than that, though, comment below. Tell me your thoughts about this chapter. Tell me your thoughts about what's to come up. I want to see. I want to see Gajo do a couple cool moves while he's in this. I'm hoping he has, like, some new attack. I want to see, like, a new secret art, or maybe instead of a sword, he makes, like, puts his arms together, but maybe instead of, like, oh, yeah, double turn into a blade, they turn into, like, a cannon, and it's just some giant tank-looking, uh, like, metal piece on him. That's, that'd be badass to see. Or or he just gets, like, uh, goes in, like, Titanium Dragon, and, and I want to power up from him, or anything. I want Gajil to put out something new and looks uh, badass before this fight is over. Because Gajil needs more spotlight. He deserves it. Gajil's a really good character, and he hasn't got anything in a long time. Those are my biggest things that I want. I want something from that from Gajil, as well as I want to see these attacks from Alderaan. Alderaan and Gajil are my primary wish list right now when it comes to content for this, uh, for this fight. But anyway, uh, other than that, they'll comment below. Thumbs up the video. Uh, but friend the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed. And thank you all for listening.